deer burgers are typically not great um, but we can fix that and uh, what I've got here is some deer that I've processed there's no fat cut into it so I'm gonna add the end slice of bread just blend it up into breadcrumbs and then some of this onion soup mix this has a pretty good bit of sodium and a ton of flavor thanks in part to some disodium guanolate or DSG if you will it's a uh, MSG but twice as good. You make Uncle Roger put leg down from chair and you make all our ancestor cry again. And then I'm just gonna mix one egg in and then I like to push everything pretty flat to the bottom and I am gonna make four burgers out of this so I score like a plus sign or a cross or an X or whatever your perspective is on this just so that I have an even amount of meat in all of my burgers. And speaking of we're just gonna take a section of that roll it into a ball and then pat it into a patty. Uh, a pretty good tip right here is you can take your buns and kind of lay them over your patty and know about what size you need to make it. Deer with no fat is not going to shrink up near as much as hamburgers, so just slightly larger than the bun will give you a full bun of burger meat. And now we're just going to set these in the fridge uncovered for a minimum of six hours. That's going to help dry out the outside of them and produce a nice sear on the outside. And now I've got a medium high heat on this skillet with some baking grease in there and I'm just laying two patties in at a time because that's what fits in my skillet. Once that gray creeps up about halfway up the burger, it's time to flip for the first time. And as you can see, the crust is not super impressive this first time, but that's okay. We're going to flip them again. And if you're worried about the doneness of your burgers, you can always use an instant read thermometer, of course. Uh, you should cook it to 160, um, but I would cook it to 150 there's going to be some carryover cooking and it's going to be fine what I do is just when I start seeing juices come up to the top I know that it's time to flip and I cook both sides twice and of course the final time here I'm going to go ahead and lay some cheddar cheese on these and then I cover my skillet with a plate to kind of help steam that and get the cheese melted faster without cooking the burgers any further and of course, once that cheese melts beautifully, I've still got two burgers to cook. So I'm going to take these out of the skillet, add a little bit of bacon grease back to it, and then put those remaining two patties in and just repeat the process that we just went through. Now, when the burgers finish cooking, I'm going to scrape up any bits of like almost burnt cheese and turn the heat down just a little bit, and add some butter and toast some buns. Uh, pretty simple process here. They're going to do it really quick, like a minute, minute and a half, and you should have nice golden brown buttered buns that are going to be perfect for your burgers. And we're ready to plate. Just put some mayonnaise and ketchup on one piece of bread and then kind of twist the other one there and then you've got evenly mayonnaise and ketchup buns. So now we'll stick the burger with melted cheese on top, add a little bit of bacon and some lettuce. Of course I would put tomato on it but it's May and tomatoes are not in season yet. But at any rate, this is a very delicious cheeseburger. If it's any consolation to you, my daughter did say that it's better than a Big Mac and a Junior Bacon from Wendy's. But that doesn't mean a lot to me because McDonald's is absolute trash. Uh, anyway, that's a story for another day. Thanks for watching, guys. Really hope you all enjoyed.